It's going to be a high temperature, high pressure week with a heat wave forecast and multiple problems that need resolving. I'm heading to Liebe to take a look at my new machine and my new LH60 arm. And I fancy myself as a bit of a fitter technician as I head out to a truck breakdown to see if I can diagnose a problem. I'm Daniel and this is Asheville Weekly, episode 94. We're just mixing up a bit of ballast. Yeah, it's going to be great. This stick, but me and Terry can't even feel it. He was in pain, I would say. No. The train is still stuck in the yard. I feel sorry for anyone who's got to stand behind me. Is your back door locked? It's too late now. He's dead and it's touching like this. <sighs> well, obviously, man will duck the puddle. What? Completely out of our control. Thanks, the boss. You are amazing. <laughs> I'm loving life. It's Monday morning. It's 6.23. I'm on the way into the yard. Uh, Terry's still not in. On Saturday of last week, Chimek and myself, we put together the work list for the drivers on the new system. And this morning, Chimek got a couple of phone calls. One driver is back to work. He hasn't been trained on the new system, but what we did was we put him on some work uh, with some drivers that he knows who do know the system. Uh, one of the lads who was meant to be in a volumetric concrete lorry, he said he couldn't get his car started, so he couldn't get to work. So we took someone out of the tipper and put them on a volumetric. When he got in that lorry, that driver messaged back and said he did get his car started and he's coming in. So now we put the other driver back in the tipper. Uh, fortunately, we loaded everything we needed to load on Saturday. So it's a simple case of just switching from one lorry to another. Now today is meant to be a heat wave like we've never seen before. 38 degrees, I am told. Fortunately, the good people at Asheville, all of them sit in air-conditioned offices. However, the main office where you see Terry, Shane, Julia, Chimek, and Sinead, I don't think that office is as cool as the ones which we built. I repainted it, but we didn't build it in the way that we built my office and the merch office and the training room because it was already an office and the others were containers that we made into offices. So it's not insulated in my office, uh, click here to watch a video where we created my new office. It's got, I think I've got 100 mil insulation on the floor, walls and the ceiling, which keeps out the cold, but also keeps out the heat. I think that everybody in the main office, they're gonna move into the training room for today so they can be nice and cool. Now we have four trains this week, Monday, Tuesday, the sticker man's calling me. The sticker man is calling me. What are you saying? Oh, Mr. Donovan, where is he? <laughs> are you going to get a Donovan to come down and do a little bit about your business? He's going to come down and do it, but he's just going to cope me the whole time. He's meant to be looking at what he's going to do. But even if it was the best place he had ever been, he'd still just rinse me, like, for the entire time. Yeah. So I got a message yesterday saying that we weren't going to get the train because it was so hot. But then I got a message a couple of hours later saying that they are gonna send us the train. So I hope they do because we're busy. We've already got 500 ton a day booked on and none of that is for HS2 at the moment. So I think we're gonna be very busy. I will know in a few minutes whether that train is gonna come in, but I hope it will. Does he have any warning on the dashboard? He said there's no, there's no warnings. But he can hear a knocking sound. Yeah, and he's making like worse and worse. Okay. What's that me's so address now? I'll go, I'll go out to him, yeah? Okay, oh, thanks, mate. This lorry is making a knocking sound. Like the driver's done the safe thing and he's pulled over, but there's no warning on the dashboard as of yet. If there is something wrong, it, left. It, then turn left. it generally says it on the dashboard, but I just take in the risk, like it's not worth it. I don't think I'm a fitter, but I'm gonna go and have a look at it because I may spot something. Ugh. Monday morning, eh? Morning. Morning, What's this sound it's making? Very, very weak. It's not like, it sound like it's there and it's touching like this. And there's no sound on Friday? No, no warning on the dashboard? Nothing, no, no, no. And there's a banging sound. Is your body fully down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is your back door locked? Yeah. And when it's running like this, you don't hear anything? Yeah, yeah. If you want to can go, you try to turn around about. I'm gonna go to the roundabout and turn around, see if I can hear this sound as well. I can hear it. Yeah, it's here on the front. And, uh, that sound, yeah? 
sounds like a speaker. A speaker? Yeah. Hold on, stop. Now look, when I put it in reverse, the noise is strange. It's a speaker. Turn that down. I think you're listening to a sound on the speaker from outside and it's crackling. Is this off now, yeah? Yeah. Drive. Gone. Oh, I can't believe that. I'm telling I you. I can't believe that. Oh my God, that this is something like that in my life. You, mate, you did the right thing. You did the right thing. I'd always prefer you to stop and check the truck in case something's gonna get damaged, yeah? Basically, the speaker was recording the noise from outside and somebody turned up the sound on the brigade camera system and you were hearing the crackling from outside. But all sorted now. Thank you, boss, you are amazing. No, I don't know about that. <laughs> I didn't think one second this <laughs> Well, danger avoided. That's why I wanted to go and check it first, because if we called Scania out, rightly so, if uh, there wasn't a problem with the lorry, Scania would have then charged us <coughs> for a call out. It's an easy mistake to make, and I would prefer every driver to check the lorry because um, not all of the mechanical problems with the lorry will come up on the dashboard. The driver lost 20 minutes, he might drop a job today, but you know, something 10 times worse could have happened. I'm now gonna head to the yard <clears throat> and see what's happening and hopefully we get a train. Let's see. Oh. Hey, loading and going out already. Come on, lads. Road is wet, it means lads are going over the wheel wash. Any word on the train from the shunter? Nothing yet, he's going down with it, apparently. Yeah? Waiting for it to come back in now. What did, what's Flo doing? What's the matter of him? Straining, just went down the yard, the dust. Okay. Right, so the boys are doing their scientific extra wetting down of the yard. Here, look at that. How's it going, Flo? See the lorries at the end there? I need you to repark them properly and take the baby grab and put it down there. Move them all out the way, please, yeah? Right, that's fine. Yeah, yeah move, them all out the, move them all out the way before the train comes, yeah? Because it's going to be busy in here today. And turn on this sprinkler. Oh, yes. Yeah, turn on that sprinkler. As the train was late, it's missed its slot to leave. So the train is gonna to have to stay here until tomorrow. We don't mind, cause I'm into trains. You need to be clear, without full drawings, yeah. our price for drainage is a provisional sum. How can we price something without drawings? And then when it goes wrong, they're gonna say, oh yeah, you, you, should, you should pay for it because you priced it, but you don't wanna pay for drawing, so how can we take the risk? I don't think we've got spec what they want to use. I've checked the drawings, there's nothing specified. So ask him, say, please specify what it is that you want us to use. No, yeah, that's what And, and we'll price accordingly. Yeah, that's what I'm mentioning. He, he, they, they can't not give us a spec and then say, why are you using this and not using He's this? He's questioning the values um, as of 15th of June. What, well, do you, what do you value? Yeah, has changed and they need to be higher standard than before 15th of June. Well, that's all well and good, but why didn't you put that in your drawings? Yeah, and he's asking what drawings were submitted to us for his own calculations, whatever. He's asking what drawings were submitted to us. Yes. But he provided I, us yeah, with I drawings. Know. He says, who is that calling you? Try smoking slow, I don't know what they want. It's not go on, go on. If he's trying to get it. Maybe they try. Um, Hello? Well, David is on the phone to Travis Perkins. <laughs> I just want to get your reaction, Will. Okay. Uh, can you tell me where you were on Saturday morning? at Enfield DPD. Michael O'Donovan says that you were filming with him in the morning. I brought Will with me to do the video in. Oh, yeah. 
That's, that's not exactly true. It's not exactly true, well, or it's I, not entirely true. No, no, or what, or it's not. It's it? just yes, is it? straight, no, is it? straight, not true, not, not true. true. Because um, Michael O'Donovan said that you were filming with him with his classic lorries. Really? Yeah, that's what he said. I mean, I would have preferred to have been doing that than picking up parcels from DPD. Uh, so, so you do want to go and work for O'Donovan? <laughs> no, I don't want to work for O'Donovan's. Okay, but so so we have got to the bottom of it. Will was not filming for Michael O'Donovan, even though he said he was. But you do want to work there. I thought he was a better choreographer than me. Yeah, 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 yeah. He is definitely a better choreographer than you. The co choreographer, is that what he is? A choreographer? What's he, a dancer? <laughs> I'm going to carry on with David now, but in other news, I have received a jury summons. I know it's the law, and I know we all have to do our part, but I've got travel dates booked. I'm not going to be able to do it yet, so I responded to them and hopefully they will be accommodating and put back my jury service by as long as possible because I cannot do it now uh, with what's going on. Go back to him yeah. and say, can you please provide your structural engineers calculations for the temporary support works? I've asked them this. You can't say, you don't want to pay for drawings for temporary support and then ask what's your plan for temporary support. You can't not provide details yeah. on the insulation and then say, oh, why have you used this and not used that? You can't just say what you don't want. You have to say what you do want. You can't just say, mm. because otherwise we're just chasing our tail. We're wasting time. Tell him to do it or we'll price it based on that. Okay. Or our temporary works will be in as a provisional sum. Yeah, okay. Not to be awkward, but just to protect ourselves. The more drawings we have, the more accurately we can cost it. It's a double-edged sword. If you if you pay for full drawings, you can get an accurate costing. If you don't pay for full drawings, then people are guessing. You might save money not paying for uh, stage five construction drawings and all the calculations, but then when the person starts, they're gonna go, well, hold on a minute. You didn't, I didn't know what I was doing 100%, so now it's gonna cost you more money. So I personally believe it's better to do all of the drawings before you do anything on site. That's my personal opinion, but what do I know? That's it. Is that it, yeah? Uh, yeah, that's it. So I'm gonna ask about the splinters. Why the skyline? Yeah, wait, and then we're gonna give him more. Now delete. It's Monday afternoon. It's 37 degrees out there. But that's a minor. I'm loving life. Yeah, Chimek and I are putting the list together. I'm not gonna lie, I'm trying to get my head around a new system, work it around the jobs and the breakdowns and the holidays and everything at the same time, but we are nearly there. Everybody needs to be loaded for the morning, is loaded already. All the boys refueled. Unfortunately, we're not getting the train because the train is still stuck in the yard. Trouble is for me, I haven't looked at my emails in about three hours. So I'm gonna spend some time here afterwards doing my emails and then I'm gonna go to the gym, AKA sauna afterwards and see if I can't pick up some weights. It's Tuesday morning, I'm in the yard. It's eight o'clock and it is already 28 degrees. We've turned all the sprinklers on. We're just dampening down the road so we don't have any dust. The train is still here with no sign of leaving and the Volvo tipper, we had a problem with it and we parked it up, but we've had someone come out to it. The dashboard was lighting up like a Christmas tree. There was loads of faults on it, but it turns out after a plug-in that it was just a broken wire behind the dashboard, just clearing all the faults off it and that lorry should be good to go out. Everybody's crying about the heat out here. Obviously, I'm a tropical people, so I will determine how hot it is. I said I was tropical. I didn't say I was a cactus. I'm overreacting, it can't be that bad. I think I'm gonna stay in here for a little while and uh, let everyone else in the yard uh, kind of uh, supervise and, uh, and work out what temperature it actually is. Come here, man. Shagger. Really well. I'm not trying to get you, bro, I'm standing under the umbrella, innit? It's nearly the end of the day and the heat is savagely affecting people. 
What everybody doesn't know is that these Asheville umbrellas double up to offer shade from the harsh conditions at the moment. It's 40 degrees out here, but me and Terry can't even feel it. And we can't even feel the sprinkler either because we got this Asheville umbrella. Now Terry Duckman's for a couple days and he went fishing. But something has come to my attention. Let's look at a picture here of Terry with a fish. Now this picture of Terry with a fish, this looks suspiciously like a picture of me and Terry when we went fishing and I caught a fish. Click here to watch a video where two regular guys go fishing. <laughs> yeah. And it looks like Terry took the picture and he got Will on Photoshop to remove me from the picture and then he just left himself like he caught that fish on a different occasion. How do you plead, Terry? I'm not guilty. So that didn't happen? No, it didn't So happen. you did in fact catch a fish without me? I did in fact catch two fish. Two right. fish. Did you catch the fish or did your brother catch the fish? No, no, I caught these ones myself. And there are a number of suggestions about a possible YouTube channel for Terry, for Terry <laughs> the Fisherman. But in the lead at the moment in the poll is the fish shoot. Or the fish are you? Or Fishville or something. Fishville, yeah. I see a few comments, Fishville. Fishville. Well, these people that are suggesting that I make a YouTube channel, or... Actually, you suggested, suggested it. You suggested it. it. Terry's going fishing at the weekend. Launch my own YouTube channel. He's going to launch his own YouTube channel. I, I don't have time. You're right, Terry. I don't have you time don't have time. time. YouTube channel. With YouTube all the channel. extra fishing that I now have planned after getting bitten by the bug again the weekend, I don't have time to film, edit. Why well, have you got to ruin my evening? What do you mean plans? Although, Jay and Dan did say that they would edit the videos for me. Did they? They did. Well, I don't know what mm. computer they'll be doing that on. I don't know what camera they'll be filming that on. I don't know, they reckon they got these IMAX. They said they reckon they, they got reckon, all the stuff. They reckon, do they? Yeah, do they? I, I don't know what cameras, lenses, microphones, um, waterproof GoPros, I don't, and I don't know how you'd get there. Well, I, I did put this to them and they said, don't worry, we've got all that covered, so. Did they really? They did. did they really? Jay smirking behind the camera now. So not alone at Asheville do we do standalone videos, we do private projects behind <laughs> Daniel's back. Really? It's not behind your back, we're gonna tell you we're doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can safely, yeah, you no, actually joking. ruined my evening. There, yeah. will be no, you, there will be no Terry Fishing YouTube channel, because I don't have the first thing about media. Sometimes I have to get Will to airdrop things to people for me, because I can't like, work out how to do it, so that won't be happening. Rest assured, Daniel. Good. My talents do not lie in media. Yeah, they are, they lie in people skill. No, wait, hold on. No, no, no. no. Oh, in operational. We're not matters. quite sure. Well, yeah, operational. Some would say we're not quite sure where they lie just yet. Yeah. Nah, well, nah, 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 nah. They definitely are in, in operational matters. Wait. Well, that's it for a sweltering hot Sahara Desert day in the yard. And there's an accident on the A40 and it's closed. So neither of us have any idea what time we're going to get home. But we don't know we're leaving now. Well, you're leaving now, but I'm not leaving <laughs> now. Have you got that to end the day, yeah? It's Monday morning. No, it's not. It's Wednesday morning. And uh, I'm up at Lee Bear in Biggleswade. I come to have a look at the L860 stick and also the 914 machine that they are preparing. So what's the latest, John? It's busy, very busy. That's good. Can you actually get hold of any kit? Uh, no. That's what <laughs> Hi, Baz. Morning. Yeah, good, you? Sorry, this is Max, who's our workshop manager. How you doing, mate? Manager, yeah, super. <laughs> How you doing, today. mate? You all right? The only thing we've got left to do is change the head bracket yeah. because the head bracket doesn't fit. Okay. It's, uh, need to go about 15 yeah. mil each side. These pads will do me good in the yard, yeah. man. It's just tracking around on concrete the whole day. So we put it on the front, not on the top, because I didn't, I didn't ask for that. Right? Oh, we got, have we got my lights on? There's no, no, there's no extra lights yet. I've got four already. <laughs> There's four up there. Yeah. Oh, you got two, four on there, and you got some on the back. Okay. I've already had some additional ones to what it would yeah, normally have. Okay. Oh, you changed all the lights for LEDs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Fine. Yeah. And camera system. You camera got system. Camera system. Yeah. On top, on top of the cab and everything. Yeah. Have you done it? Have you given it a paint job? We've done a little bit of paintwork on it. Oh, you did the undercarriage. Okay. Yeah. 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 The paintwork itself. We did this. Yeah. Because there was a few stuffs on there from when they took the decals off. Yeah. But the original paintwork, apart from that, the guy looked after it. Re he really he was did. Owner operator. 
We've just got uh, to give it a final polish and clean up. We've yeah. Got a greasing system in there. Oh, we've got the greasing, greasing system on yeah. as well. So we've got my lights, rubber pads. We've got the quick hitch. Yeah. We've got the 360 cameras. It's We're basically there, mate. everything you wanted. Oh, apart from it's not black. <laughs> I was hoping you'd surprise me. I'd walk in and it'd be sprayed black. But I would. I tell you, to be honest, okay. I would have liked nothing better <laughs> to either paint the machine in black yeah. or top them blue and white. To oh, no, 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 no. We're, we're so, doing that. Oh, okay. <laughs> and when you look here, like for, yeah. a, for an original machine, yeah. you normally expect that to be scuffed or marked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can tell he looked after it. He looked after it well. It. Yeah. This is the new beat, Sonic. So this, yeah, is, so this is new. That's your lines to work. Yeah, yeah. both these lines are yeah. new. Yeah. Hey! Whoa! Look yeah. at that! Well, we didn't do that. They did that for you. <laughs> hey! Okay. So yeah. Thanks, BPH. <laughs> I like that. They did a great job. Yeah. Thanks, John. No, Appreciate it, mate. You're welcome. Decent. Decent. The new stick for the LX60. Now, at first glance, I was like, right, this is it. And I thought to myself, right, we have one problem. The problem is that I thought that uh, we had some kit capable of um, holding this in the air uh, so the engineers could fit this on in our yard. Having a look at it now, um, I don't think we do. This stick has um, the hydraulic pins which push out this way and push out that way. Now, it's hydraulically piped here and there's power for it here. We don't have that. Ours is just a simple pin. Libra on the phone now, they're talking to technical. Perhaps they can make an adaptation. Uh, perhaps they can pipe this and perhaps they can build it up at the sides here with some washers. I'm at the basement salvage with Chris, Robert, and Barity, who is nodding his head in disapproval. Can't tell you a lot about the basement. What I can tell you is this home cinema is going to be finished soon. Heading back to the yard. I'm back in the yard and one good thing has happened. The train has left. It's gone back to Isle of Grain. It's going to load and hopefully it'll be back here tomorrow morning. UPS have not found KSI's green screen. Um, we're waiting for a green screen for KSI's house to finish the job. And UPS have lost it. Now they have 10 days to investigate and they are five days in. The trouble is this green screen is bespoke and it took six weeks. So I'm telling the company, you better start making another one now because it's not our fault. We ordered it and UPS have lost it. So you have to take it out with UPS and they're saying that we can't start making another one until we give UPS the 10 days. So we're in limbo, but they are gonna send us a um, manual temporary green screen. How am I gonna gas in the video and tell KSI it's gonna be the best YouTube room there is? This will be the best YouTube room in the world. Jesus. I get a bespoke green screen made. These people lose it and now I have to go and say, oh here look, there's a manual one where he it's not the best. And I have to go and give excuses with my tail between my legs. Ah, oh, this is just, and it's completely out of our control. There's nothing we can do. And at the Basement Salvage, soon to be the home cinema, it's progressing well. You saw me there earlier, but there's one wall, and on that wall, we had fabric backed with paper. So we took fabric and we made wallpaper with it and had to go on the wall, but now it's come to it. The client has chosen a fabric which cannot be cut and they cannot stick it to the paper. It will not stick. And this is one of the final items there. I've dealt with the client a lot on this. I was heavily involved, but then David took over. Now we're getting towards the end of the project. I'm getting involved again. And rather than send the client an email at five o'clock like people do and just hide behind it and who will deal with it in the morning, I am just gonna call this client and I'm gonna tell him exactly what it is and I'm gonna tell him, listen, there's nothing we can do about it. And then David will also follow up with an email so he has all the information so he can go back to it. But we need a solution immediately or that cinema will not be usable. Well, it will be usable, but you have this fantastic cinema and then you'll just have one white wall in the middle of the whole thing that just looks terrible and the color scheme there is blue. So we are under a bit of pressure. We're all hands on deck. We're doing everything we can to overcome our challenges, but the challenges keep coming. I, I, just, I just hope 
that UPS can find this green screen. Yeah, I know. I, I just hope they can I find it. I can't believe but, from all the things, this one is like, anything else would be good. <laughs> this. They could have taken anything else. That is the one thing that, and do you know what? Mm. This green screen was my idea as well. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be great. Put the chair here. <laughs> yeah, bro, put the chair here. It's going to be cool. It's going to come down my hand. You know, it's not going to be there. Oh, you fool. Oh. Listen to me, listen to me really, really, really good. Tell me. Have you got a new PDF system in your lorry? PD what, sorry? PDF systems or something? New ticket things you do? Yeah, get yeah. What's the crap with them? Are they any good? You said, you, when I asked you about it, you said you'd already seen it, but it wasn't perfect. I haven't seen nothing. I wouldn't know the. I didn't know what PDF system was. You ain't taping this now, by any chance, are you? No. Does that go as an invoice? Yeah, it can as well. And what it is, that system, it talks to your accounting system. So that is integrated with my Sage. So everything I put in that feeds into my accounting system. And then in my accounting system, I can see how much on grabs, how much on tippers, how much on skips, how much on this, how much on that. Got ya, got ya, got ya, got ya, got ya. Oh. It's quarter to four, you must have gone home. No, I'm not on the way to see a big job. A big muck job. Uh, what job are you going Haringey to see? Haringey this time. Haringey, okay. Haringey this time. Michael, my brother, I feel older than you. The stress they're putting me through. Everything's falling apart. I'm trying to hold it together. But I'm struggling. I'm going to tell you. You will be old before your time. You will look like the fella on Huckleberry Finn. Oh, Mike, they're stressing me out, man. They're stressing me out. What do you think I'm going home? I should have gone home at three o'clock. I thought you were going to look at a big job. I know, I said I should have gone home. That's what I mean, but I'm going to go look at a big job as well. In the meanwhile, right? I'm trying to put words in my mouth, right? (laughs) Why don't you come and take over this firm? Because if I wanted a headache, I could have stayed doing what I was doing. You ain't got a job now anyway, your sister sold the firm. What are you going to be doing? You're just going to be scratching, kicking stones all day, scratching around. No, but I'll come work for you for 1500 quid a week. Cash. You want cash money. You want to come work for me for 1500 quid a week? What, when are you starting? Very, very shortly now. And I want... You want? I want... Yeah. A Range Rover. I do not want one of them poor man's Range Rovers. I want a Range Rover, one of the new ones that the sticker man's got. And I do not want it stuck with Gilla tape. When I was going to give you the job, I asked Range Rover if you could have one and they went, No, we don't want them tow rags driving around in Range Rovers. He turns up here in dirty boots. That's why we get him out of here straight away. That's what they said. Yeah, 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 yeah. But little do they know, Range Rovers, that I kept this in the custom they're accustomed to, the amount I have bought of them. So you're saying that you single-handedly kept Range Rover afloat for many years? Many a year I kept Range Rover afloat. That single one I bought was probably the, the one they needed to sell to make their profit. Right. I don't see how an old Range Rover with, with 250,000 miles on the clock with a head gasket about to go and, <laughs> and, and, and the spare wheel on, I'm not sure how you buying that qualifies that. And I got a laugh, the driver dropping you the wrong side of the road. Then you couldn't cross the road. Yeah, I know, but what can I, I, had to, I had to let him carry on and go and do it. See, at this firm, we get all the work done. At your firm, you don't. Like, you park up at the end of the day with 10 jobs left. I had to let him go and do the work. The work was more important than me getting to, to Land Rover. Right, I'm just pulling the job here now, looking at a big heap of rubbish. Yeah, all right, fine. Of course you have. All right, well, let me know how you get on with that job. <laughs> all right. All right, bye. I'll speak to you soon. Yeah, bye. All right, bye, bye. Go to another angle for this next phone call, yeah? Daniel. Um, I thought it's better I just call you as opposed to you just getting an email from David. The guy has come back to us on this fabric um, paper backing. He said it is not going to work. And the guy who paper backs it, he said, look, I'm not doing it. He couldn't do it for a few days because he said it was too hot and the adhesive wasn't working and he can't cut, we can't even cut it with a Stanley knife. Now we need to work out 
what to do so I, so I can action it as soon as possible. Okay, so as a temporary measure, yes, would it be the wrong thing to do to paint the walls? It depends what I'm going to put on it after, because if I paint it, I don't want to have to scrape it all off again after to make something yeah, stick yeah, to yeah. it. The, th the thing I was thinking after would be a wallpaper. Okay. And I'd, ha I'd have to find one. That's, that's suitable which is not difficult I can go and look on the weekend if you can look at the weekend I can put it in next week but I know you want it finished for Saturday so no I want to I want to be able to sit in there and watch something on Saturday I'm oh. not bothered about that wall because oh. like, it'd be nice if it was just painted blue so it doesn't look so ugly I'll call the lads now and I'll check but if it's going to hinder us then don't do it then we it. won't do it okay I'm sorry man it's, it's not us it's, it's not your fault yeah, it's not I, your fault I, I just yeah. I, I didn't want to send you that in an email I just wanted to talk to you no no okay cool cheers Danny. bye Thanks, bro. okay so we have a solution to that problem now we have another problem I have two missed calls from Will Daniel Wilson I mean, you just look at the whatsapp I just sent you you're gonna, you're gonna like it I'm gonna like it am I well it's yeah, the first thing so. that I'm gonna like today really Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that, that's been heavily been. I'll send you a picture of them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right, thank you. No, no worries. Thanks. If there's anything Thanks. else, just let me know. Bye. All right, we'll do. Thanks, bye. Now, Libra. Hello, Daniel. The stick I saw had hydraulic on it. Yeah, it is. Basically, we just changed that so it becomes a, a manually locking. I think is uh, you just have a, a like a bar and you pressure up the pins and, and do it that way. Really? Yeah. Come in, come in. All right, fine. Okay, well, if you think it's going to work, when is so, it being yeah. wrapped? Well, obviously, we're going to try. I didn't realise they weren't wrapping it today until I've just spoken to Tony and obviously found you, so... Uh, can, you, can you please let me know when they are wrapping it? I will indeed. So that LH60 stick is 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 going to work, yeah? Yeah, well, fine. Well, absolutely fine. fine. Please. All right. Well, let me know. And I spoke to your guys there. Mate, we, we haven't got a crane that's suitable to hold. Yeah. to hold. So you guys need to organize your crane. So we'll do the lift, lift ad. We'll do the high ad. We'll do the transport. We'll come and change the stick and take the other one away. Okay, great. Thank you, mate. Back-to-back -back phone calls and we are problem solving. And then I have David outside. So the LH60 issue is resolved. The paperback wallpaper issue isn't solved, but we have a resolution. And David is at the door. Um, hopefully he has a solution to another problem. And then we've navigated our way through. David, tell me. I just chased this box. If they see it, it's coming today. Mm -hmm. uh, for KSI. Okay. Which goes inside the city. Um, Bartosz, he told me he probably need, would need to stay another day, but depending on what Stan is doing, but he says without the box, really, he needs to have a box over there to like, make progress. Just leave him there then, fine. Yeah. yeah. And the box, yeah, I'm a bit not more concerned because they were supposed to get it yesterday. Yep. And the shipment says it's going to be on the next run to you guys today. So fine. Fine. All okay. right. Um, Thanks. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I now have a catch up with Terry. I haven't spoken to him in a few hours. And then I have a call uh, Teams at five. Oh, my phone is popping off. I got a Teams at five uh, talking to the people about the project I show you with the borehole. And then I have a, another Teams at six uh, to talk about something else we're working on, which I can't share with you yet. Oh. It's Thursday and I'm in the yard. It's 1.17pm uh, and Terry left the yard with the driver because we had a call from one of the drivers who was out on the road. He said he um, coughed up blood. So they parked up the lorry immediately and as soon as the lorry was parked he called the ambulance and the ambulance was going out to him. Now we don't know what's wrong with him, we'll have to wait for the ambulance to tell us. But Terry grabbed another driver and he's gone out to get the lorry because the lorry would be left at the side of the road um, blocking normal people going about their business. We hope that he's alright and our thoughts are with him. The train came in this morning but it only came in with 13 wagons but we managed to get it offloaded.
last night after the conversations you saw that I had, um, the client at the new home cinema basement salvage, he actually chose um, a wallpaper. Let's have a look at that wallpaper here. Uh, this morning we called the company and just by some kind of chance they're closed today and tomorrow but the wallpaper is in Belgium. I think we need about uh, 22 linear meters. If they do have it in stock then we'll order it Monday so we have it next, <coughs> next day. Excuse me. Moving on to QPR uh, we carry on with the work and now we're doing some new work. We're removing seats to put back in some standing. I can't believe it, but there's going to be standing in football grounds again. I may have a game where I just uh, go in the standing section and I'm planning the dates for the coming season and I messaged Wayne who helps with our hospitality and I didn't think he was going to be there this season because he's passed his course. He is now a qualified plumber. Um, he's moved on to greener pastures, but he will still be at QPR next season. So the man's going to be hustling. He's going to be doing his plumbing and he's going to be um, working with Asheville, doing the hospitality and doing his own networking while he's there. So that was good news. Uh, that's it for the moment. I'm waiting to hear um, what's happening with our driver. So what happened? So he rung me and said that he was having chest pains and he was coughing up blood or he spat blood out or something. So he was pulled over at the side of the road in the lay-by and mm -hmm. said he called an ambulance. So I had to take another driver out to him mm -hmm. and so to make sure the lorry got back mm -hmm. and obviously wait with him while he was waiting for the ambulance. Ambulance arrived, checked him over, said he was okay, but still said they wanted him to go to the hospital. But then asked me to take Asked me to take him to so the hospital. The ambulance asked you to take him to the hospital? Yeah, the ambulance asked me to take him to the hospital. Why? Just said they were so busy. Really? So, and said so it's not a heart attack, so it's. It's not a heart attack. That's one thing. How was he? He was right, he was uncomfortable. There was, he was in pain, I would say. He wasn't the best looking. Really? Okay, but you dropped him to the hospital? So he's going to call me in a while. Okay. But he said he wanted to come back and get his car, but the ambulance said no. So that, no, you can't, you can't drive. The paramedic said no, I don't, so. Okay. All right, thank you, Terry. So there it is. Anything else? No, but I'm starving now. My lunch will be sitting on my desk since 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock's too early for lunch. Yeah, I know, but it's 10 to two now, and that's too late. <laughs> <laughs> it's Friday morning. I'm at QPR Stadium, coming to check on the work. The driver, which I told you about yesterday, uh, he had tests at hospital, he had an x-ray and they found nothing, but they've asked him to come back today for more tests, but thus far they can't find anything. Oh wow, new sign. I like that, next to the scoreboard. So every time you look at the score and every time it's on TV, you can see it. How's this one? Hey, there's another one there. Ah. Now all in the new design. I like that. Loving that. It's good to see the, uh, the new logo everywhere. What remains to be seen is uh, when a game is live on TV, how that is gonna show up on the TV cameras. I'm not sure if the font is bold enough, but uh, it's too late now. And once the season starts, then I will figure it out. We've got two of them. Let me take you through this quickly. Uh, so we completely demolished the area. All the walls were gone. There were tiles on the floor. When we took out the walls, the tiles started coming up. If you look at the area, it looks very telltale. Like this marking on the floor makes it look like part of this was added afterwards because on the floor area here, they put sand on the floor and then they just put self-leveling. So the tiles came up pretty quickly. We're gonna put complete new flooring down. Walls are gone. Now we have the moisture resistant plasterboard on the wall. We're going to have a suspended ceiling, what's going in next week. And we have a lino flooring going down on the floor. It's going to be high traffic, this area. We're going to have three toilets here. And we're going to have four toilets over here. In between the two of them, we're going to have a mirror on the wall there. If I turn over here, 
we're gonna have three sinks on this wall and either side of the sinks, we're gonna have hand dryers. You can see the electrics already going in for the hand dryers. All of this must be finished uh, before the season starts. But compared to some of the work we do, this is relatively simple. So we're not worried. This should all be done. Let's go and look at the next bit of work. Little gleam for there, little teeth gleam. Over the other side of the stadium, this is where we are taking out all the seats to put standing. So here you can see we've already stripped out all these seats. We have to strip out all the seats there and in this section over here also, and they're gonna be balustrades. Now we asked QPR, do they want us to remove these? Do you want us to take all these out? But they said, no, leave them because they may use them as fixings for the new balustrades that are going in. I'm not sure how this is gonna affect the capacity, but apparently this is something that is being trialed and this is something that the fans want. So everyone in these areas will now be standing. It's not a bad view when you're standing here. I feel sorry for anyone who's got to stand behind me if I stand in this section for a game. Let's do a test. Right. Can you see the game behind me? Not a lot. Not a lot. Not a lot. All right. Okay, well, I, I am one row behind Dudek. A couple of weeks back when I was here, um, I showed you work we were going to do in the box to create an L-shaped box. Well, the plan changed because QPR were asking how much time we needed and we said, listen, with the time that's left and all the other work we're doing, uh, I don't think we're going to be able to get it ready for the first game of the season. So we're making two individual boxes. But this box has been completely stripped. It's completely gutted. Now, because this is obviously a football stadium, you can see the steel work which is in place. There's nothing we can do about that, but we're just gonna have to plasterboard over it and get it looking as best we can. You can see this building telling a story, all the walls are moving, and this has just been add-ons and add-ons and add-ons for years. You can see where it was built in front of this one. I actually wanna refurb the entire stadium and start again, but that doesn't help the club because even if the, it's refurbished, it's not gonna put more seats in here and it's not gonna generate more revenue. So the club have to do as best they can. So we're gonna plasterboard all the walls. We're gonna put a new ceiling in place, spotlights, and we're gonna make it pleasing to the eye. And then later on in years coming, then we're gonna have a look at the feasibility of doing major improvement works. And I've been told that the train has now arrived at the yard. Let's get it offloaded. I was just checking something in the training room. Um, I said we needed some uh, tires for the big loading shovel, the 586, but it turns out now we need front tires for both the loading shovels now. It's gonna be expensive, man. Uh, so we're looking at different tread depths and Terry's gonna have to agree with someone today because no one really keeps them in stock. So we need a price to come out and sort that right away. The trouble is the people who are gonna come and uh, recalibrate the scales, they wanted to come in on Tuesday, but at the moment we're down to one loading shovel because one of the tires is so bad on the 566 that we don't wanna use it. It's 12.27, I have a meeting at one o'clock um, with a company talking about uh, the tipping bodies on the lorries. Not only am I talking to different manufacturers for the chassis and cab, I'm talking to a couple of people about the bodies, seeing how specialists we can go, seeing what features they can offer, seeing um, what sort of steel they use, they use hard ox, how 
thick are their bases. I think on our current ones, what ABBA made, the bases were five mil thick. So I'm gonna go through options with them. And then I'm going to try and film a brand deal. We're just mixing up a bit of ballast in the yard. So we've got some sand and some stone and we're mixing it up to prepare for the volumetrics coming in. Saturday and I'm in the yard. One of the things about being an employer at Asheville when you're based at this yard is if you buy a bike, AKA a bicyclet, know that I will have to have a go on your bike to ensure that the bike is roadworthy. Michael O'Donovan called me earlier and he said, I bet you're still in bed. I said, no problem. Let's quickly FaceTime to show who's at work and who's not. He didn't answer and he hasn't called me back yet, which tells you exactly what happened there. I sent an email to Volvo uh, for this lorry. Uh, this uh, second axle here, we need to do the kingpins next week and we need to get this lorry ready for test. I think it's got a test on Friday. Uh, Lee Bear were meant to be here on Monday to do a repair to the 926, but they've told us that they're not coming till Tuesday uh, because the repairs they're doing at the moment have dragged on. We have three trains next week and I am working on putting the list for the video team in order because uh, Shook Ute Productions is on holiday for the next two weeks. So it's gonna be a bit of a strain on Friday and Jay and we have a lot to do. We have four videos mid edit. We have to do weekly and there's so much we have to film in the yard next week. I'm trying to get as much as I can done now because Terry is going on holiday soon which he's entitled to. And also his hip replacement has been moved forward. It's something that needs to be done. Why is this lorry open? I beg. It's something which needs to be done and it's been moved forward. So uh, as long as Terry's um, blood sugar levels and everything stay good, uh, then his operation will happen earlier. He needs about, um, two days at home, even though the doctor said he needs about two weeks and then he'll be back at work. But we need to do this and get it all out the way. So Terry has his holiday, uh, so he's back to 100% health. And with his new hip, he should be able to offload the train with a shovel in about an hour. So Shane's got a new bike. Let's see how this works. Now Shane tried to tell me that this bike works up to 23 stone. Now why this man would have to tell me that it works to 23 stone is another thing altogether. Apparently, the tires feel a bit flat. I'm not gonna lie. Hey, wait, hold on, it's moving. I don't expect you to run, Jay. It's only Will runs with the bike. So I'm gonna so not pedal and I'll see. I'm gonna go down there and then come back. Hold on, I'm on level four. Speed, I'm on the speed set. 17 miles an hour. Now this is electric, so it should just continue. Fifth, why is it, why is the speed dropping? Obviously, man will duck the puddle. What? Flying. What? Over the bump. Shane. Don't you have, like, more mud flaps or something? I've got, I've got splash. Oh, I do, yeah, I do have more mud flaps for the front. Yeah, i got splash, man. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like a personal problem. Yeah, it does sound like a me problem, doesn't it? But yeah, nah, I will get that fit. What's on. the fastest you've been on this? 22, you've got to pedal like a madman dog. 22? Yeah. That's right, I just went 23, so that's, yeah, so <laughs> as long as, yeah, I just, yeah, 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 I just, yeah, 23. <laughs> what, dip the knee on the corner. It does feel comfortable. I've tested another bike in the yard and I'm happy to tell Shane that it's roadworthy and safe. And that's it for Asheville Weekly, episode 94. Click here for the Asheville website. Click here to subscribe to our channel. Click here to see an Asheville video you may not have seen before. And click here for last week's episode, which was number 93. Something right here. Yeah?